And the camera's just fallen over. That, kiss it like that, making it. Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I'm back at the Caravan and Motorhome Club site at Clumber Park near Worksop with this, the Rolling Homes Darwin. Now, if you know the name Rolling Homes, perhaps you'll know it for its real oak cabinet work, or perhaps you'll know the company as a specialist in transporter T6.1 conversions. Or maybe you'll have spotted that this is one of the very few brands that has Volkswagen's own motorhome qualification scheme accreditation. It's also NCC approved and type approved initially in the individual vehicle type approval until all the paperwork's done. But this is a fully type approved motor caravan, so it will be registered as such and not as a van with windows. And of course, that VW accreditation carries through from the T6.1 conversions to this, their new big boy. Appropriately, perhaps it is called the Darwin because the company has evolved from producing those T6.1s and a few Transit Customs and Mercedes Vitos into building something much, much bigger. Now, the first Darwin was shown at the October 23 caravan show at the NEC, and then it was revised slightly with access through the back doors for the February NEC show. And this is the latest version that we've got to test. Now, time for some statistics perhaps, and you can see when you look side on just how much bigger this is than your typical VW transporter. 6.84 metres long, 2.70, 2.7 metres high, and 2.04 metres wide. Price starts at £99,995. Let's call it 100 grand in round figures. But that's for the 102 horsepower manual gearbox version. This one has the 177 horsepower engine and the 8 speed torque converter automatic gearbox. Now that alone pushes the price up by £8,892. Then there's the, met the metallic paint that's another £1,464. Well, VW always did know how to charge for its extras. The total cost of this vehicle comes to £123,347. And no, no, don't switch off because that, these days, is a typical price for a big crafter man or Mercedes Sprinter based, one of the premium vans, in other words, uh, used for panel van conversions. If you take one of those premium vans of this size, turn it into a camper van, and that's the sort of price you're going to be looking at. In fact, the Autosleeper M Star that I tested not so long ago, that's similar money, £125,000. Right, let's take a look then at some more details around the outside. And then this vehicle has the executive pack £3,995 worth. And that gives you the cab air conditioning, the multifunction steering wheel, parking sensors front and rear, the reversing camera, automatic headlights, the front fog and cornering lights, and a heated windscreen. And then there's the alloy wheels, 16 inch alloy wheels, they're £900. And the final external feature that isn't standard is the 155 watt solar panel on the roof. That is a further £890. Now, if we look down at this off side of the vehicle, apart from the Darwin branding up front, well, there's very little. It's very plain, but I quite like that. If you like uh, camping off grid, being a bit unostentatious, whatever the word is, then this will appeal. And you've got quality fittings like these framed habitation windows. Your fresh water filler is here. Your vent 
for the Truma heating and the heating in this van is a Truma Combi 4 diesel and electric heater. So that will cut down considerably on your gas consumption. Mains hookup of course, you've got these extra marker lights down the side of the vehicle because it is so long. And then your water tanks, well they are both under slung. 90 litres for your fresh water, 50 litres for the waste. You've got your two drain taps, so they're the rather fiddly ones that I don't like very much, but uh, hopefully rolling homes, well, this is their first big conversion, so they've got time to learn on stuff like that. If you want your tanks to be heated, automatic heaters and insulation are a further £380, but not fitted on this particular van. Now, round the back of the Darwin, this is where the vehicle has changed since that October launch. The doors will swing right the way around, if you wish. Now, the original prototype Darwin, you couldn't get in through the back. Now, you can. There's this useful step. And if you've come in off the beach covered in sand, well, straight in the shower, what could be better? than that. But also you've got this storage area. Now there's a very bespoke aspect to rolling homes work and this area could be fitted with a hanging rail with shelves, you could have chairs in here, whatever you need for your particular purposes. And I can't emphasize enough how bespoke rolling homes work is. This is very much a top-end converter. So. We'll come back to the washroom and show you that in more detail when we show you the layout. And the layout in this vehicle is quite unlike anything else on the market. Now at the back, you've got this dark tinted original Volkswagen glazing, so these back windows are glass. And up on the roof, you may have noticed, well, as well as the reversing camera there, you've got a TV aerial on the roof, that's standard spec. Down the near side, well, there's not a lot more to see. More of these flush framed windows, which are very nice. And of course, the sliding door, which is your main access into the vehicle. It comes with a fly screen, but you don't get a step, a standard. Now, there have been issues with various manufacturers fitting steps in these crafters and mans because of the situation with the position of the fuel tank. But Rolling Homes do list one as an option and it's 500 pounds if you want an electric step. Without it, well, it's okay for me, but some less mobile people might struggle. So, the layout, well, this gives it away a bit, doesn't it? Because you've seen the washroom at the back, and here, obviously, is the kitchen. So this isn't a front lounge layout, it's a mid lounge layout. Now I'm gonna spend some time getting to know this van, eating in it, sleeping in it, washing in it, and tomorrow I'll tell you what I think of this very unusual design. So day two with the Rolling Homes Darwin, and now I've really got to know this van and I have to say, really rather like it. But let's not predict the verdict because there's lots more to show you. Now this, apart from anything else, is a three and a half ton, two berth van. There's no rear travel seats, no extra berths, and a payload of 380 kilos. Now most vans of this size are on heavier chassis because the base vehicles are really quite uh, heavy in themselves, it's quite difficult to get these vehicles uh, drivable on a standard car license. But if that's what you want, this is one that you can drive on that standard UK car license. It also comes with a three year warranty because this is a very high quality product. Now, Rolling Home's history before the company was formed, Mark Cooper, the uh, founder, ran a bespoke kitchen business and you can see that in the furniture. You can, you can have your Rolling Homes Darwin with the typical camper van style furniture board, but I have no idea why you would because this European oak furniture made by Rolling Homes in their own workshops is quite stunning. It's a five grand option, but worth every penny. 
Now at last, it's time to show you around this van. Starting, of course, with the swivel cab seats. Well, they turn easiest if you just open the doors a fraction because otherwise they tend to scrape along the door panels, but not difficult to swivel the seats. And then you have got this secondary seating area up front because as you'll see later on, if you've got the double bed made up, well, if one of you wants then to get up, it's somewhere for you to sit. Pity there isn't a coffee table here, um, but apart from that, a nice addition. And plenty of choices of upholstery if you don't like this blue scheme. The standard is leather and cloth mix, and it's real leather, and it's beautifully finished. Like everything else in this van, it is exceptionally well trimmed. And then, well, you'll notice that it isn't, as is typical these days, a full height walk through into the cab. It's not, it's not a, a stoop, because you can almost walk through, but you have got this little shelved area up here, and then your control panels. Now, this control panel is a touch screen, it's very easy to use, it shows you your wastewater tank, your fresh water, uh, times, battery condition, all sorts. Now, I have just discovered a very useful thing because last night I found this display much too bright. When I wanted dark in the van, it was very bright, but you can turn it up and down, and I've only just discovered that. So that is a great little feature. Also shows you battery conditions and so on. And then alongside that, you've got your controls for your diesel and electric Truma combi boilers. Four kilowatt one, and that lives under one of the sofas, as we'll see. Because you've got diesel heating, you have only a very small uh, gas locker down here at the bottom of the kitchen unit, just inside the sliding door, and that holds one camping gas to a uh, 2.75 kilogram cylinder. But now, let's have a proper look at the kitchen. And, well, as I said earlier, it is beautifully finished. You get these Corian worktops, this real oak furniture, and it is, I think, quite stunning. And then, well, as far as appliances are concerned, the microwave, if you want it, that is a 650 pound option. You don't have to have a microwave if you're not gonna be hooked up. Uh, if you're gonna be wild camping and uh, off-grid a lot of the time, probably wouldn't bother. But if you do want mains appliances, well, you've got a main socket there, another one at the end of the kitchen unit here, uh, one down on the floor over there as well, and I think you've got, yeah, you've got USB sockets at the end of the kitchen unit too. The hob is quite interesting because it's a combined uh, induction and gas one. So two gas rings and an induction ring, best of both worlds, and that is so much more efficient than those old fashioned hot plates that you get on some of those big built-in cookers that you see in coach-built motorhomes. You do a standard get a gas oven and grill combined unit, the usual set for duplex that we've seen many, many, many times before. And then the fridge is a 84 litres, um, but a convenient height, very easy to access. And being a compressor one, it's very tilt tolerant and you can just switch it on, adjust how cold you want it to be and then forget all about it. Underneath that, I thought it was going to be a wardrobe, but that's actually useful shelved space. Although this being a rolling homes and every vehicle built to your spec, of course, you could have that with a hanging rail if you wanted. Plenty of drawer space, both underneath the oven here. One drawer and then one little flap down there. Now this unit here, this locker here, that looks as if it should have a hanging rail in it, but <clears throat> it's missing in this particular vehicle, but uh, no shelves in there. Again, you could spec that how you want it. And then you've got three drawers on this side, all nice soft clothes, everything does feel very swish, and a large cupboard alongside. The sink has got this uh, flush fitting Corian top, and then underneath it's a, an under, under mounted sink. And plenty of worktop here too, it's, it's a good kitchen space, this. you've got plenty of room to prepare, You've got your fridge at a nice eye level, you've got a microwave if you need it. I can't think of anything really that could have done better. Well, 
actually maybe I will just nitpick on a couple of little details because that cutlery drawer, well I would like some proper cutlery holders in there. And when I'm walking about in socked feet, up here the floor is nice and warm. Down this end, well it's noticeable that the heater outlets are at each end of the lounge and of course in the washroom. There isn't one at this end of the van, so it does feel that much colder, particularly on the floor. It was very, very cold last night. Particularly the floor does feel quite chilly to my tootsies. <sighs> but this is the bit that makes the Darwin so different. You've got these long settees, sort of almost in the middle of the van, because this is your washroom, of course, in the back. And, well, it's a nice space to just sit with your back against the wall and relax. You haven't got that very open feeling. You're not going to sit and look out through wide open back doors or, or a wide open sliding door because, of course, the, uh, the lounge is in the centre of the vehicle. But you have still got big opening windows on either side and it has a feel more like a coach-built motorhome, I think. More, perhaps, cosy. If you don't want that sort of goldfish bowl feeling, it is a nice space to sit and relax. You can sit with your back against the kitchen too, no, way, no problem in moving the scatter cushions and, and facing that way. And in fact, the TV point is on the wall here. You've got aerial socket and 12 volt socket, so you could mount a telly on the washroom wall here. Or just use one freestanding on the kitchen unit if you use a telly at all and not a laptop or whatever. You've got a big skylight above. It's a push-up one rather than the wind-up one, which I would perhaps have hoped for at this price point. You've got lots and lots of lighting. I've got it all turned on here for the maximum effect, but you've got these strip lights, mood lights, down lights, everything in the ceiling, more strip lights under these top lockers, reading lights in all four corners of the lounge, and of course this floor level lighting as well. They couldn't really have done any more. And again, you've got these beautiful uh, oak cabinets with the concealed cupboard catches underneath. And then when it's time to dine, well, the table stores behind the driver's seat. It's a freestanding table, so you can use it inside or outside, of course. Simply unfold the legs. And nice and sturdy. No wobbly tables in this van. Pity they haven't rounded off the corners, I thought, but uh, maybe that's because, again, this is that beautiful light oak finish. And, well, it's plenty big enough table for two people, but it doesn't dominate the space. Storage in this area, not only have you got the top lockers, of course, but you've got under settee storage as well. On the near side, you've got these useful drop front doors. Two of them, which give easy access into the space. Now, my bedding, well, I've got two single duvets and two pillows, and they take up roughly half of that near side settee base. Over on this side, things are a little different. You haven't got the drop front doors, so you will need to lift off the cushions. Now, it's worth noting that these settee bases, they're vented, but they're not hinged, so you lift them off to access the space and you'll see that on this side you've got partial storage, about half the space is storage, then you've got your combi boiler and all your vehicle electrics. And it's worth noting too that here we have another upgrade. Standard is a 100 amp hour AGM battery but here we've got a 230 amp lithium battery. That's a 1200 pound option but one certainly that you'll want if you're envisaging a lot of off-grid camping. And then at night, of course, these settees become your beds. <laughs> Pleated blinds all around. Remis blinds in the cab too. For 
effective blackout. And then, well, just remove the backrest cushions on either side and you've pretty much got instant single beds. Over on the near side, the bed is 1.82 meters long, just a fraction under six foot. This one is a bit longer, 1.88 meters or six foot two. And they're both 61 centimeters wide, that's two foot. Now, Rolling Home says it can adjust the bed lengths if required. I suppose they'll have to adjust the kitchen to suit. But it is worth knowing if you're both tall that you could have longer beds. The one thing I did find though is that with these fixed sections, and I found this in other vans too, some auto trails for example, that when you're lying down, because the beds aren't the widest, I wish these were removable because, well, they just get in the way. It's better then to use the double bed option. So to make the double bed, you need these four panels. They've got their own storage in the bottom of that settee base. And then you simply slide them in. And then of course the backrest cushions from the settees go in the middle. And now you have a very generous double bed because this is of course the same length, 1.82 or 1.88 meters long, depending where you measure it, but it's 1.77 meters wide, five foot nine and a half. You could almost sleep across this vehicle if you weren't very tall and if you managed to persuade rolling homes to make these side cushions detachable. Now it's better in double bed form if you sleep this way around because then you can just shuffle off the end of the bed into the washroom. In single bed form it doesn't really matter which way around you sleep but of course if you use that TV point it's better anyway to sleep with your heads towards the front of the vehicle. You can still sit up with these pillow, with your pillows or these scatter cushions against the kitchen units. And well, this was a very, very comfortable bed. You don't notice these joins at all. It feels completely flat. As I say, it's a really good size. Just be aware that the diesel heating, there is a slight noise to that at night. Not from the fan, but from the pump. I was slightly aware of it, but uh, I think you'd soon get used to it. It's not as noisy as I've experienced in some vans. And then there's the washroom, which I have to say is one of the star features of this van. For a start, it's far, far bigger than you expect in a panel van conversion. Then you've got the superior Dometic toilet with its ceramic bowl. You've got this nice Corian worktop around a nice ceramic wash basin. And again, you can get your head right over it. Plenty of storage, top cupboard, another cupboard behind the loo, another cupboard under the sink. There is loads of storage, loads of room to use the loo too. You're not gonna be short of shoulder room or leg room in this van, unlike so many others. You could use this as a changing room too. And of course, best of all, there's a proper separate shower. Now, the water was a little bit slow to drain away, but apart from that, that is a superb thing to have in a panel van conversion. It's a proper, proper shower with these nice, sliding doors. Okay, it's not the biggest. You will need to check it for size if you're a big boy or a big girl. But there's a little corner shelf uh, for your shampoo and so on, which I think is just boxing in the wheel arch. But this really is a great space. Just remember, 
Don't use it with the back doors open. <laughs> So driving this Darwin, well the first thing to note is the cab seats and I find them very, very comfortable. You've got electric adjustment for the lumbar support, you've got tilting on the squab, you've got these twin armrests, nicely leather trimmed. It does feel a very comfortable place for a long journey. Of course, the automatic gearbox, eight speed, it's a torque converter gearbox not the twin, twin clutch DSG like you get um, in the T6.1s and it's, it's very smooth, it just makes driving very easy and effortless. You've got this 177 horsepower engine too which obviously makes light work of what well, isn't a huge vehicle really. Now I say it isn't huge but it does have a very long wheelbase and you do have to remember that sometimes if you're in a car park or if you're taking a, a tight uh, turn, tight left turn, you don't want to mount the kerb or touch anything that's on the left hand side. You do have to sometimes swing a bit wide because it is a very long wheelbase on this vehicle. Quite a short rear overhang so you know compared with um, a, a seven meter coach built it's probably quite a bit longer actually between the wheels. Now the positive of that of course is that it is very very stable on the road. Uh, coming up the A1 yesterday it was very windy but you wouldn't really have known from the point of view of this vehicle being blown around because it just wasn't. Even when we were passing the HGVs it was, uh, yeah, it was perfectly happy not being uh, affected by crosswinds at all really. Very, very good on the road. Instrumentation is nice and clear. You've got these big dials with rev counter and speedo. Conventional instruments, not uh, these modern electronic displays. I, I much prefer this conventional design. The screen in the middle, that does um, your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, your reversing camera, your DAP radio. It's fairly free of rattles too. There's the odd one or two, but it doesn't rattle too much. The other option on this vehicle is the heated steering wheel. Nice thing to have, 366 pounds. And early on, I did talk a lot about the options on this vehicle and the costs. And uh, yeah, it's not a cheap van, but that's the price you pay if you want a premium base vehicle. If it was on a Fiat or Peugeot, it would be a lot cheaper, of course. But these crafters, mans, Mercedes sprinters, they always come out expensive if you want the premium base vehicles. And this is a world away from driving a Fiat Ducato. It feels a much more modern, much more, much more contemporary, much more premium vehicle. Um, and that's what you're paying for. I think it's worth every penny. That, kiss it like that, it. So, final verdict time on this rolling homes Darwin. And picking up on that Darwinian theme, well, this does seem like a real evolution of the rolling homes camper van. You've still got this beautiful real oak furniture and it's still a Volkswagen, still a type approved, NCC approved, Volkswagen approved. Volkswagen camper van, but it is so much more than the T6.1s. It's a much bigger, totally different animal. So maybe a revolution at the same time. And I have to admit that when I first saw this new Darwin at the October show, I wasn't at all sure about this layout. It was just a bit too different. But now I've used it. And that really does show that, that you learn so much by really using a camper van or a motorhome and why it's so important often to hire one first if you've never owned a van before. Also, to take note of all the advice in MMM magazine, which now incorporates what motorhome magazine as well. So, this Rolling Homes Darwin, 
I really like a lot of things about it. It doesn't have the big storage for bulky outdoor chairs, barbecues, surfboards, all that sort of stuff that you might stuff into the garage area in a fixed bed van. But on the other hand, you have so much more space to live in a much, much, much bigger lounge, that fabulous washroom, and of course, really good kitchen as well. So if you're looking for a spacious two berth van, certainly give this a close look because the quality is lovely and the design is just a bit different. And you can bespoke things like the upholstery, even the bed lengths to suit you. And I think even though I know we're going to get comments about the price. I think this is a really cracking new van. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel.